Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's take a look at carbon dioxide. We know there's been a significant increase in the atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide because of the industrial practices. We can see here that since, oh, I don't have the dates on here, since about 1850, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, to the current date of 2018, the concentrations of, of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere have increased from about 285, and this would be in terms of parts per million, to about 405 parts per million. That is a 42% increase, which is very significant. And we also know that carbon dioxide is a very effective absorber of infrared radiation between the 14 and 16 micrometers. So now, when we take a look and see, well, we have a 42% increase, the concentrations in parts per million instead of parts per billion for methane and nitrous oxide. How does that compare to the primary greenhouse gases water vapor? It turns out that for every one carbon dioxide molecule, there are more than 20 water vapor molecules. And that, of course, varies a lot on the relative humidity of in a particular place on the Earth. But there's still a big difference. Now, when we take a look at the bands of radiation that carbon dioxide can absorb, notice that it's a very good absorber between 14 and 16 micrometers right here, and it's a very good absorber at about 4.27 micrometers. Now, the 4.27 micrometer band happens in a place where there's very little radiation coming from the Earth's surface. So there's virtually no change, no effect on increasing the carbon dioxide levels on this particular absorption band. But here, from 14 to 16 micrometers, that could be very significant. Now, notice that by itself, ignoring the effect of water vapor, carbon dioxide can absorb about 18% of the total absorption of all the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. That would be very significant. However, since there's a significant overlap between what water vapor can absorb and what carbon dioxide can absorb, there's only a relatively small additional absorption by carbon dioxide, about 4 to 4.5% of the total absorption capability. In addition to that, we know that carbon dioxide absorbs things very quickly. Matter of fact, by the time you get to an elevation of about 30 or 40 meters above the surface of the Earth, carbon dioxide has already absorbed just about all of the radiation that it can that water vapor does not absorb. So by the time we're maybe 50 meters up into the atmosphere, carbon dioxide and water vapor combined have pretty well absorbed all of this radiation band, and there's really no additional radiation to be absorbed in that particular band. And since carbon dioxide can absorb any other region of the, of the spectrum here, then there's really nothing else to be absorbed. So in and of itself, when you think about the amount of radiation that carbon dioxide can absorb, it's already gotten close to saturation. You can see that there's a few places right up here and right here where there's still a little bit more that can be absorbed. So increases in carbon dioxide would push that up just a little bit more. It doesn't do exactly 100% yet. But I don't think that is where the real concern should be because, like I said, the vast majority of that radiation has already been absorbed. The real question is probably how much more will that additional carbon dioxide keep the radiation or the energy that's absorbed in the lower layers of the troposphere, keep it from moving to the upper layers. Remember, it's the slowdown of that motion of that energy that is really the greenhouse effect. And by increasing the carbon dioxide, that effect will become enhanced, and so there will be more energy trapped for a longer period of time, and therefore there will be a larger temperature difference. However, that said, since carbon dioxide is only 1 out of 20 when it comes to combining water vapor and carbon dioxide combined, it may not have that much of an effect. So that's really the place where we need to look. The question is, Will that additional carbon dioxide slow down the transmission of energy from the lower troposphere to the higher troposphere, and will that therefore cause larger temperature increases on the surface of the Earth? By absorption alone, it doesn't appear that carbon dioxide can do a lot, but will it hold back more energy? Well, that we're going to need to look at a little bit more careful to see if that's maybe where carbon dioxide could have an effect, a significant effect, on the change in the climate. So we'll take a look at that at a later video.